I'm gonna show you five ways to make your miter saw cut cleaner, safer, and better. Let's go. Now I've used three different models of miter saws in this shop, the DeWalt, the Delta, and the Festool Capex. All three of them could use some improvements on their dust collection, even the Festool. But I did wanna upgrade this one because this one produced more dust than the Festool did. Everybody knows that a miter saw is one of the messiest dust producing machines that you have in the shop, but you can fix that pretty easily. I bought this kit from Shop Nation. He's a fellow YouTuber and he didn't know I was gonna buy this or do a video on it, but I did want to upgrade this dust collection system on this DeWalt miter saw. It was really easy to put on. It take the old pieces off, put this on, and it does improve the dust collection. Before I had this, I did several test cuts on pine as well as MDF and had dust going pretty much everywhere. But when I put this new system on, you can see how much it basically pulls it and directs it right into the pipe where it gets sucked out of there. I'm using a Festool dust extractor for this, but it does have the adapters to help you get set up with a regular shop vac or any other dust extractor you may have. This worked extremely well. Now it's still not perfect. You're still not getting perfect 100% dust collection, but it is significantly improved from the stock. And he has these available for multiple models of miter saws, pretty much any one that you might have. Bosch, DeWalt, Rigid, not Festool. Come on, Travis, need that Festool. The number two way you can improve your miter saw is to add zero clearance to the throat plate. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. You can build your own throat plate. What I've liked and used on this DeWalt is for years I've used this stuff. This is a fast cap zero clearance tape. It's like a vinyl tape that has a really sticky back. It's easily removable when you want to change it out, but it's also easily to put on. You just stick it on and cut and now you've got a zero clearance. This produces a much cleaner cut on the bottom side of the cut than if you're just using the standard throat plate because that throat plate is wide. It has a very wide opening and that leaves room for little bits and pieces to fall down in there and you have a lot more tear out with those. Now, if you have a fast old Capex, you can do the same thing, but with an actual physical insert. This is UHMW plastic stuff that inserts in there. You can change these out easily as well. And they do come with five in the package, so you'll have several to use, whether you're doing bevel cuts or straight cuts or just something like mine. It just gets damaged over time. The number three way to improve your miter saw is the blade. It sounds simple, but if you're still using the stock blade and you're doing woodworking, not rough construction, take the blade that come with it off because typically those are like 32 teeth and they cut really rough. That's what they're made for, rough construction, fast cuts. You wanna get something like an 80 tooth. I use this 82 CMT chrome blade. It's a 12 inch saw, 12 inch blade. This is a fantastic blade and they stay sharp a very long time. They create a very smooth, very nice clean cut you're gonna see a major, major improvement if you just upgrade your blades. Again, I like to hire tooth blade for woodworking because 99% of the time we're doing cross cuts. And if you're doing a lot of cross cutting, a higher tooth blade will produce less tear out in order to cleaner cut. There are other options available to you, but I think CMT is one of the better blades I've used and I've kept CMT blades on this saw for years. Next up, you can improve your miter saw's cuts cleanliness as well as safety with this little jig that you can build. This is super simple. All I'm doing is taking some MDF and making a miter sled. Now, I'm gonna build this sled to fit my Festool Capex because that's the one I use most of the time, but you can certainly build one for any miter saw. Let me show you how to do it. I'm just gonna use some MDF. You can use plywood, whatever you want. This is half inch thick, I think, so it's plenty thick enough. I only cut one piece that's gonna fit on the base of the saw, one piece that's gonna fit on the back, AKA the fence. Now I'm gonna rip this to four inches. This is the height of my fence, but you can rip it however you want. Once I have my pieces cut out, I'm just gonna lay the base on the miter saw. I've got two half inch by half inch by about five or six inch long pieces. I'm just gonna CA glue those to the bottom, right where the saw is has the natural ledges. This is gonna let me put that base on every time exactly the same place, so it's always square. Once that's glued on, I'm just gonna put the fence on the same way, a little CA glue and activator. You can always reinforce this with screws if you want. Then you're just gonna set the depth setting on your miter saw. Make sure you set the depth setting or you're gonna cut your piece in half. You don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna cut about an eighth inch deep in this material. That way I've got a zero clearance on the bottom. It's gonna give me a zero clearance on the back. I'm gonna do 45 on each side but that will notch out the back fence so you can add a little faux fence down below. That'll solve that issue. That's it. Now you're able to cut small parts and without tear out on longer parts. 
Because we use these little lock bars on each side, it's gonna lock it right into the side of your miter saw. It doesn't matter which one you have. It's gonna slide on there and be perfectly square every time, and it's not gonna shift left and right. That's gonna give you a perfectly clear line exactly where you're gonna have to cut every time. You know where that blade's gonna go, and it's gonna give you a much, much cleaner cut because you have zero clearance on the bottom and the back. Not only that, it's gonna be much, much safer to be able to use this to cut very small parts like you see here. Just make sure you use something to hold those small parts like this is a $10 million stick from FastCap. I'll link to it in the description. When cutting extremely small parts like that, it can be very dangerous to use a miter saw to cut those because there's no support on the back of those on most of your miter saw fences. But when you build something like this little miter saw sled, it gives you extreme support on the bottom as well as most importantly on the back so it doesn't twist and pull back into the saw and cause a kickback and or an injury. Now, if you primarily only do 90 degree cuts and don't worry about the 45s, then don't even do those and notch out your fence back there. You won't even have to use this uh, secondary fence down below. Just make sure you set the depth setting on your saw blade so that it doesn't cut all the way through this because if you do then you've got two pieces and it's no good number five way to improve your miter saw is to build a proper miter saw station if you're in a dedicated shop i built this one last year but there are tons of options out there for you if you want to get some ideas of what works best for you but this has really really helped as far as the accuracy goes in my cuts because i was able to incorporate a stop block system in this which i never had i can get repeatable accurate cuts now and it helps with organization in the shop not really to do with the miter saw but it's just kind of a two birds one stone scenario it's your classic two bird one stone scenario <laughs> Now you got a place for your miter saw, you can have stop blocks and you have organization and a place to keep like dust collection or dust extractors. It just really helps upgrade your shop. When I was looking for a miter saw station to build, I had to design my own because I was in a, such a small space. I wanted something compact. This is only six feet long, about two feet deep. So it takes up very minimal room. That's what I love about this one particularly. Because this miter station is so compact, I needed a way to break down longer stock whenever I bring it in the shop. So I did incorporate this wing that flips up when I need it, down and out of the way when I don't. Do you wanna know how to cut more degrees than your miter saw is capable of? There's a video telling you exactly how to do it right there. Click the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Or if you wanna know how to build this miter stand with plans, there's a video right there. Either one of those boxes gets you the big old virtual fist bump.